Today, we're going to be talking about annotating videos on Nexus. First things first, we'll go to the datasets page and find a video to annotate. There are a few different ways to upload videos as well, uh, either through this upload assets section right here or connecting to an external bucket, which might be more necessary for larger videos. So first we'll select an existing video on our project. This will bring us to what looks like an image. And although it seems very similar to the other assets that you may see that are our images, there are some differences between the video annotator and the image annotator. So you'll see that once we swap to this video bar section at the bottom, which you can select from that bottom left button, you can now see that instead of still image frame, we can actually play videos in real time and you can actually track the individual frames and scan over them with the video bar at the bottom. You can also select on annotations just as you would any other image, but on these individual frames. Also unique to the video annotator, we also have some video settings, so you can change the playback settings to alter how the video is being played and at what speed. You can also change the zoom settings on the timeline, which is the video bar at the bottom, and this allows you to zoom in closer on the individual frames. Uh, the video bar may be quite small if you have you know, thousands of frames within your videos. Also unique to the video bar is the idea of objectness within videos. So you can see that within this class of sharks, we have shark one and shark two. And unlike images in which each object within separate images are different from each other, the same shark instance can be carried over to multiple frames. So shark one exists in all of those frames and shark two exists in all of those frames as well. Now, if we were to annotate a new object that is unrelated and not created through those same sessions, you would see that below we've created shark three, a new instance of a shark within our video. So to ensure that you're creating the same shark instance, be sure to use the tools that we'll talk about shortly, which is our interpolation mode and tracking mode to ensure that these instances can be matched together properly. So now we'll talk about our interpolation mode. So the idea behind this is to quickly interpolate shapes, uh, polygons or bounding boxes together uh, in a linear fashion and propagate them to make predictions of how the object will look like across different frames to speed up that annotation process. So we've annotated one object on the first frame and now we're going to annotate the same object but in a different position in another frame and all this done for polygons. And we can see once we've committed those, you can see how the algorithm tries its best to interpolate between the different shapes. And you can see also that it's not the most accurate but is sort of approximate to the location of the shark. So generally we would recommend recommend using interpolation for non-complex objects or using it for bounding box purposes, as that's where you'll see the most efficacy. Now to also improve the quality of the interpolation, you can also annotate intermediate frames and make them keyframes, which provides the algorithm an additional point of reference for how the object should look. And now you can see that with this additional keyframe reference, the predicted masks are now much closer to what they are in reality. And we can actually be fairly happy with that given the algorithm is operating almost instantaneously. And you can see this also works with bounding boxes as well, uh, which is our sort of recommended output format for this non-complex algorithm. So you can see with the initial bounding box and now with this new bounding box, we actually get quite a good performance on this interpolation. And we would almost be happy with that from the get-go. And once we're happy with these annotations, all we have to do is select confirm. And this will save these annotations as real annotations within our project and can be viewed as per normal. Now we'll jump to a different video to demonstrate the different use cases that video tracking might suit more, which is sort of more erratic movements and more complex objects. So here we see a video of people dancing and there's a lot of different movements here, certainly non-linear even despite the shortened amount of frames. So this would definitely be a use case in which tracking mode might suit this context more. So to get started with tracking mode, what we would have to do is annotate the different objects once again. So with tracking mode as well, we can also annotate multiple objects. So we can annotate this person on the left right here. And then we can also annotate this other person on the right. And as we can see, even though they are of the same class, we still treat them as different instances. So they'll be tracked separately. So now that we've annotated those two objects, we can now go to the end of the video, in fact, 
and proceed to track through all of these frames. So the trade-off between interpolation mode and tracking mode is that interpolation mode is almost instantaneous, while tracking mode takes a little bit more time. So this can play into your considerations when determining which tool to use for your own annotation use cases. Now, once that tracking process is done, you can see that the tracking has actually done a pretty good job of identifying each individual person. And you can see that the instances are actually respected. So person two remains person two, person one remains person one. So as we can see, tracking mode may not always produce the perfect annotations right off the bat, but what we've done instead is provided an interaction interface such that we can navigate to a frame in which there are imperfect predictions or annotations created and re-annotate them such that you know, they are more representative of the ground truth we're seeking. So in this case, maybe we want to re-annotate this individual such that the annotation is covering the whole body. So we can go ahead and re-annotate this. And what this will do once we've finished is allow us to refine all of the other predictions in this video related to the information that's been picked up here. And this will enhance the prediction quality throughout the other frames as well. So once we've annotated, we can select refine, and this will then propagate that information to all the other frames and improve the quality such that we are then happy with it and we can then select to confirm all of the new annotations into our data set. So we can see once it's been refined, we can see the improvements on the annotations and we can select to commit that data if we would like or continue to refine as many times as needed. And we can see here as well that Additionally, note that the video bar also shows occlusions by showing a break in the line segments. This is a useful tidbit that you can use to look at your video annotations just with the video bar and also better understand your data set. Once you're happy with those annotations, you can then select to confirm and those annotations will then be saved to the project. Now you're well equipped to go ahead and rapidly annotate your videos for either frame by frame or with our intelligent tools.